We were fortunate to get a chance to help a wonderful customer put up his 40 by 60. And we got some great footage to put some high quality videos together covering all aspects of a basic building. Over the course of the next few months, we'll be diving in step by step, covering it all. Hanging the heavy beams, to the girts and the purlins, the trims, insulation, it will all be here. We won't be covering complex features like overhangs, hipped roofs, uh, valleys, higher insulation, and so on because th well, this building just didn't have it and also because those things are so building specific it's really hard to make a one-size-fits-all video on those complexity features but what we're going to cover here pretty much every great western building has uh, it's it's also my hope to put this all together in a series of three to five minute long videos in a step-by-step -step format uh, for this job, because it's a, it's a few states away, we weren't able to be part of making sure the bolt pattern was correct prior to the concrete pour. Fortunately, I was able to speak to the customer and his concrete contractor before they poured to answer all of their last minute questions. And because this contractor was so experienced, uh, we showed up to one of the nicer pads I, I've been able to work on. Uh, we still had to check everything before we hung any steel, and, and this is how we did it. We started by grabbing a tape reel and checked that the slab was square and that each width and length of the building were correct. Checking the length is as easy as it sounds. We grabbed a tape measure from the top of the concrete notch on all four sides, simply to make sure that we had two 40 foot widths and two 60 foot long sides. I don't remember exactly what we had here, but it was within an eighth of an inch, so the tolerance requirements were, were well met. The, the corner to corner measurement will tell you if you're working with a square slab. On a 40 by 60 like this, I'd say a quarter inch is, is good enough not to worry about it. Uh, but here we, we were a little bit better than that, so we moved on to checking the bolts themselves. First, we checked the main frame bolts. This is where the main clear span frames bolt down to the concrete. The base spacing on this building is 20 foot, which uh, along with 25 foot is, is pretty typical for, for our buildings. But your building may have a different setup, 22 and a half feet, 27 foot, or, or whatever, based on your specific building length versus the base spacing. 60 foot long buildings will almost always have 20 foot bays, and a 75 foot building will almost always have 25 foot bays. Uh, but a 100 footer could have 20 or 25, uh, or a mix. Anyways, for this building with 20 foot bays, we wanted to make sure that the center of the bolt pattern uh, or the, the web of the I-beam was exactly 20 foot from the end of the slab and also 20 foot between each other. We then did this for the other, for the other sidewall and then we verified the hold line. The hold line is the distance, usually from the innermost set of bolts uh, from one sidewall frame to the other. Uh, large complex buildings can have multiple hold lines, so just be sure to review the plans carefully. Once the mainframe bolts were verified, it was time to check the end walls. Um, I like to measure from one sidewall, do some math, and then recheck from the other side, similar to how we measured the patterns on the sidewalls. Uh, for this process, your plans are absolutely necessary. End wall columns and jams are, you know, usually C, sometimes there are I beams, um, but they're almost always a C channel, and we measure to the web of the column, and then we either add or deduct the bolt offset to get the center lines for those bolts. Uh, C's either face inwards or outwards, we call it towing in or towing out, and the bolts, uh, generally speaking, are, are one and three quarters of an inches from the web or the tall part of the C. Uh, knowing that the slab was the correct width, th this measurement was easy. Uh, of course, we still cross-checked from the other side wall as well, and then we did it on the, other, on the opposite end wall. The appropriate method, should the end wall's length not be within tolerance, uh, say it's 40 foot, two inches, 40 foot, one inches, or, or it's just out of tolerance, check the measurements between each column or the, each set of bolts to each other. If the wall is not within tolerance, the method is to check the dimensions between the patterns or, or the bolts and then decide on any corrective action. Uh, this is some tough math, so if you wind up in this situation, give us a call so we can outline the process and help you troubleshoot. If your end wall concrete is exactly what it should be, there's no reason to do it this way. There's just too much room for air with the tape measure. There's what, what I call the dumb end of the tape measure, the end. Uh, but when doing it this way, the, the smarter person really should hold the end of the tape. The, the end of the tape measure slides back and forth a little bit to account for the thickness of the hook. It's, it's hard to make sure that the hook is positioned correctly uh, when you're kind of holding it there. So uh, 
it may make some sense to actually hold the tape measure at the one foot mark so you don't have to worry about the hook and then just subtract that foot off later. Uh, of course, on this job, the measurements were correct. So we moved on to checking the bolts themselves. On the mainframe column anchor bolts, we, we have three quarter inch bolts here. Uh, they're almost always three quarters of an inch. Sometimes on bigger buildings, they could be an inch. Um, and those bolts are on both sides of the column wedge. They're three inches apart, but we show them on the plans one and a half inches from the center of the web of the column. So one and a half inches plus one and a half inches is three inches. Uh, 20 foot minus one and a half inches is 19 foot 10 and a half inches. And 20 plus one and a half is 20 foot one and a half inches. And I'm sorry if this is remedial, but it's an easy thing to miss. And I've accidentally measured to a bolt at 20 foot uh, that was misplaced. I just saw 20 foot and not noticing it's actually an inch and a half out of, out of whack, uh, it ran, you know, it can cause some problems later. So keep in mind that we're measuring to the center of the bolt and not to the edge of the bolts. Once the bolt placement has been verified, we can check the elevation of each of the column pads. And if those check out, it's time to start hanging some steel. If corrective action needs to be taken, we've got a video right here to cover most of the basic fixes and problems. I'm trying to keep these things short, so I'll cover bolt elevations in the next video. I'm actually going to record it right now, so if you're watching this video, uh, that video should also be uploaded. So, thanks for taking some time with me, and I hope that you find this helpful. If you have any questions that uh, we haven't covered in this and the other videos, give us a call. We're, we're always happy to help. And also, even if it isn't a great Western building. Anyways, build great. I'll see you in the next video.